Hi, I'm Rainer. I am uh, part of the brand activation studio in Kaspersky and uh, what we do is we produce content. Let's imagine you would make a movie about blockchain or cryptocurrency and mining. What would I show? What would I choose to show? Hi everybody and welcome to Kaspersky Live. Today we are holding a live streaming event with our special guests uh, Rainer Bach and Liliana Pertinava. Can you show us for a moment their faces? Okay, say hi guys. Hello. Cool. Hey. The topic of today's live stream is about independent versus uh, corporate content creation. Who will win the hearts and minds of uh, our audience in the 21st century. As usual, I need to lay out a few housekeeping notes. So the most active users in chat will receive valuable prizes from Kaspersky. Namely, we will be delivering uh, Kaspersky software licenses and masterclass one year subscription for those of you who will be successful in answering my question in a few seconds. Uh, so wait for the chat and uh, wait for the question. Also, Right at the moment, you can uh, visit our Mentimeter uh, voting and participate in the poll. We would really like to know our audience, who guys uh, you are, uh, where are you from. So take a moment, scan the QR code using your camera or uh, follow the link kaspersky.pr live stream. This is a debate and at the end of this uh, uh, live streaming debate, you will get to decide who wins the vote. And without further ado, let me announce round one. So what is corporate and what is independent content? I'll let Liliana to start first. Thanks, Sergey. Hey, everyone. I'm really happy to be here today. And actually, this is a very important topic that we have today uh, because on May the 3rd, the United Nations is holding an annual World Press Freedom Day, uh, which is a very important annual date to remind everyone, the governments, the society, us, the people, that information is a public good. Uh, please show the Press Freedom Day picture. Um, yes, it's already picture. there. Amazing. Thank you, guys. So. Uh, I really want to thank Kaspersky for doing this talk, what is corporate and what is independent in light of this World Press Freedom Day, because, uh, you know, the information and its accessibility and independence is becoming more and more crucial, uh, as we have seen in the, you know, COVID pandemic in all of those uh, disruptive events happening all over the world in every country for every person. So information is becoming more and more important. And uh, this you know, uh, annual world, world Press Freedom Day discusses what we can do to support the free flow and independence of information, what can be done in terms of production, what can be done in terms of distribution to support independent journalism. So thanks, Kaspersky, for making this uh, talk today. Always welcome. Yeah, and, uh, let's define what is corporate and what is independent. Uh, well, you know, basically, uh, you can look at it uh, in the most simple way. So, whose interests are represented in the piece of content which you are seeing? Uh, so, basically, when we are talking about corporate content, it's usually the entity, the company, the corporation that's making the content and that oversees the content to make sure that its interests, its brand interests are protected in this content. And uh, opposite to that, when we speak about the independent content, journalism, media, blogger, whatever, uh, independent means that this represents not a corporate interest, but the public interest, uh, the audience, the people 
us, the people. So this is the independent content content that is not, you know, dived in, into any corporate, any governmental uh, interest, but is standing for independent public interest and social interest. So this is basically the bottom line of what is corporate and what is independent in the journalism terms that is taught all over journalism schools in the world. Uh, so that's what I wanted to highlight uh, in, in the talk today. Thank you for the opportunity. Sure, Liliana. Uh, would you like to say something else or you would like to give uh, Reiner a chance to give his perspective on the independent and corporate school of thought? Uh, let's go on with the debate. So I would like to hear what Reiner has to say about it. <laughs> okay, Reiner, the floor is yours. Um, I could make it easy now and say I totally agree, um, <laughs> which I do to a certain respect. My uh, so, so I maybe not really have an, a, a counter argument in the classic sense, but I'd rather say what if companies would try to follow the standards of independent journalism? Uh, the question there really is what would have companies, what would a corporate production unit have to gain from it, right? Why would they want to do independent journalism? But if you look at a company like, like Patagonia, for example, a classic example of a corporate that is putting um, public interest above their own interest often because they benefit from it. So they know their target group, they know that the target group would uh, prefer them to do completely independent stuff um, and for them that works as a marketing strategy and looking at the current media media scene out there and the um, the situation many journalists former journalists filmmakers and so are in um, I think we actually are in a situation where companies businesses, could create something that has additional value for the society uh, in the sense of create very good content um, and help filmmakers alike. And what I mean is, um, I mean, we are, we are a cybersecurity company and cybersecurity topics are super complex and complicated. And uh, often filmmakers, bigger media, do not have the time or the interest or the insights, or whatever it is, uh, to discuss these topics, uh, to jump on these topics. But uh, Interpol would say 50% of the crime today in many countries is digital and only 50% is tangible. Um, so nobody is doing anything, telling stories about these digital crimes because they are more difficult to visualize in a, in a film sense, you could say. Um, now that's a point where we as a company are stepping in and saying, these stories are out there. People should know about it. It is our, uh, it is part of our mission to educate people. So we are going in, hiring good filmmakers, up to uh, Emmy awarded uh, directors, and we are involved in defining the topic. But from that moment on, a production crew does their thing, and I see the film at the end and I would say, okay, maybe this little thing we can't do, but usually we're not getting involved in the creative process. And I think that is a relatively independent filmmaking, um, telling excellent, interesting stories that other media would most likely not tell, leaving filmmakers the opportunity to do the film in a way that they want. And at the same time, we benefit from it because otherwise these topics wouldn't be reported. And I think in, in that sense, there is an opportunity in corporate filmmaking if it's done right, uh, in the sense of that certain niches that would not be reported right now or that would not be spoken about right now uh, might come onto the radar of filmmakers uh, because films would be financed by corporations. The uh, danger that it brings with it for sure is uh, that these companies, businesses would take massive influence over the content. And that is difficult, for sure. Okay, I get your point. And I actually remember when, we, when you were 
I wouldn't call it complaining, but you were expressing the idea that uh, because uh, the independent, qu the quality of independent media content uh, has, well, left to be desired for better. That's why you started doing what you do. Uh, would you like to show us something, like as an example of what can be done when you don't get to decide uh, what these independent film producers do, but you actually set them with a goal? Yeah, just a second, uh, because it's not 100% right. I think uh, there's excellent independent filmmaking. Uh, we okay. set out on this mission because we thought that um, we are not seen that a certain certain very interesting stories, and in that case, we're talking about cyber crime, uh, are not being talked about. Uh, but that has nothing to do with quality. It rather has to do with time and budgets that people don't have for these stories. But yeah, let's look at something that has nothing to do with cybercrime. Nevertheless, it's a Kaspersky production um, that uh, started on Tomorrow Unlocked. It's a, a film called From Couriers with Love. And we, we met a few filmmakers that wanted to uh, to for the whole life wanted to go on an expedition to the Kuril Islands, but they couldn't because they wouldn't know how to make it happen. Uh, now, the lucky uh, situation there was that uh, our CEO Eugene Kaspersky went uh, to the Kuril Islands oh, yeah. that year anyway for a vacation trip. So we had a boat and uh, we hired that boat for a few weeks longer, took a group of filmmakers on that boat and out came an amazing environmental film that we didn't plan like that, but it ended up being a good thing. Let's have a look at the trailer. So just to make sure, we're looking at the trailer of the uh, from Kurils with Love. We were kind of expecting to, yes. to run. Okay, so let's start Kurils with Love. When I start my work in the 1980s, I've seen hundreds, hundred thousand sea lions on the rupees and on Halal. Now, 80% decline <laughs> okay, we'll in some over. areas. Then after uh, you. All my life, I tried to bring attention to Kuril Island. It's only people so can destroy it quickly, words, and then we will go the second video. They familiar. can protect it. All right, we're back in our studio live from Moscow and we are discussing the topic independent versus corporate content creation with our guests from uh, Germany and the UK, Rainer Bach and Liliana Pertinava. We uh, went to watch a short teaser Sorry, of a I documentary was... made from Curls with Love as a demonstration of what can be done by independent filmmakers paid by corporations to do their job. Is that right, Rainer? That's uh, that's right. Yeah, I mean, these we did not tell these people what to do. Even uh, the the guy who the film is about only joined uh, the expedition a day before they left, so he was like a hitch hitchhiker jumping on the boat. Uh, so yeah, we let it flow, and it ended up being an outstanding, very very good film. Uh, okay. Being okay. played at lots and lots and lots of film festivals now. Now back to Liliana, maybe you would like to counter this offense and provide some punchline in exchange. So, um, this is a very interesting topic. Uh, I think uh, to kind of go in depth of uh, what is corporate and what is independent filmmaking. So, uh, the case that Reiner presented to us is a case where you have this a uh, rich corporate uh, company owner who can invest his own funds into anything, literally, because I don't see how uh, this movie could directly benefit, uh, make a benefit of value to Kaspersky brand. <laughs> I mean, as a security company. Okay, environmental movie, cool. Let's secure environment. That's the connection I can find here. So this is just a very rare Frankly, this is a very rare example when 
you can find uh, something financed by a corporation that you know has no connection with what corporation is doing. So it's a rare, I think, breed of uh, movie making, very like dependent on the willpower of a specific, uh, you know, uh, billionaire or uh, company owner or something. So typically what happens is a little bit different. Um, normally corporations, they uh, want to influence the audiences to kind of uh, make them see uh, things from a corporate perspective. And this becomes really, really important when the corporation has a PR crisis, for instance. So it's important for them to make this kind of independent uh, piece of content, but it has the correct, the right, I mean, right corporate <laughs> perspective to kind of, you know, show the corporation in a better light. So there is one example I want to counter punch. Uh, there is this famous YouTuber, uh, Johnny Harris, who became popular by making absolutely amazing uh, videos for Vox. This is uh, also a big uh, US-based uh, media company. And uh, Johnny Harris was originally responsible for uh, the Borders project. He was discussing like what happens in the geopolitics and all of those, you know, intersection between different weird historical policies between different governments and nations. And uh, recently he became an independent content creator. And I think he really like matches to the standard, high standard of independent journalism and independent content creation. Uh, so he's very open, he's very transparent about his content. And uh, if any, any interest is uh, represented in his YouTube content, He's, you know, he's open to talk about it. He says it to his audience clearly. And this is very important because like, if you see this beautiful movie from a corporation, like rarely there is a disclaimer that we want to influence you to, I don't know, buy our boats or software or I don't know. Software, sneakers, yeah, that, that, that's about us. <laughs> or sneakers, whatever. I mean, what the comp corporate uh, corporation does. Uh, but in this example that I wanted to show to you in just a second, I just need to describe what it is and why I want to show it. Johnny Harris, this independent content maker, which makes amazing YouTube videos, which is related to the platform we are, we are holding the discussion right now, like YouTube, okay? So this video has over 380,000 views, which is a quite nice number for independent content. And he's talking about the uh, very interesting conspiracy behind McDonald's ice cream making machines. So there's this, this <laughs> really hilarious, but very interesting conspiracy, conspiracy theory that McDonald's is making franchisees to purchase ice cream making machines that constantly break down because McDonald's has an exclusive contract with a maintenance company that makes millions of dollars by servicing those ice cream <laughs> equips uh, the restaurants with. So Johnny Harris goes into this conspiracy in depth and he's, f he's finding the fact to tell the audience that actually this is the real business interest of McDonald's to make those ice cream machines broken. And then he finds an interesting solution to this issue of ice cream machines. Long story short, he makes a very clear disclaimer. This is what independent is. You can see and understand very clearly whose interested, interests are represented in the particular content. So please show us a short clip where Johnny is making this disclaimer. We're doing it right now. Let me just caveat for a second. Jeremy and his company Kitsch obviously have a big financial stake in this story. I'm aware that he reached out to me and gave me some of this data 
and that there's a big conflict of interest in terms of like neutral journalism and my informant being somebody who stands to gain a lot of money if this story comes to light. And that's why this story has taken me literally months to report. I've had to go through and independently report and verify every single thing that Jeremy has told me. Hence this. So yes, while there is a major stake for Jeremy and Kitsch for this story and for exactly what I'm saying here, the fact is everything that I've said here checks out on my own independent reporting. Just let that be known. Anna, could you tell me, is there really a conspiracy behind this ice cream machine thingy in McDonald's? What do you think personally? Yes. So yes. I know for a fact there is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Reiner, I'm sorry, uh, I think we are concluding our first round. Uh, we are going to take a short pause, uh, sh uh, watch a short video about you. So that will be sort of your, your chance to strike back in the form of a video. After our short pause, we'll continue to round two. See you in a short while. Liebe geht durch den Magen in German means love goes through your stomach and there's a very similar expression in Russian uh, so the way we are saying things often are quite quite similar. Hi, I'm Reiner. I'm the head of content and channels for Tomorrow Unlocked at Kaspersky. PR, like every other discipline in marketing, needs to develop on a constant basis and what we are trying to do is yeah, to show a few new ways of how we could do PR. Would we maybe in a few years seriously see Netflix and Amazon Prime as a PR channel? Then, well, we'd have to see that um, companies are set up in a way that they can produce content that is interesting enough for someone to watch on these channels. Shooting films during the pandemic has become, well, increasingly difficult. And so we had to come up with new approaches uh, how we would shoot films like um, we are now shooting this interview for example on a GoPro which is uh, not an unusual thing to do watch the full video <laughs> making photos hi everybody <laughs> we are back to our live stream my name is Sergey Luri I'm here in Moscow in our studio and we have Two marvelous guests, Rainer Bach and Liliana Pertinava. Rainer is in Germany, Liliana is in London, UK. The topic of our today's live stream, it's a debate. We are talking uh, about uh, um, corporate versus independent content creation. Who will win the hearts and minds of the audiences in the 21st century? We have just completed the first round. Please take your chance, vote using the QR code or the short uh, link in chat. And very soon I'm going to announce the question which will allow you to win our special prize. One year subscription to Masterclass License, which is an online learning platform which allows you to make a better version of yourself. I can't believe I'm saying that. This is like a direct advertisement for them. Anyways, we are advocating to own your future and the reason we're doing that because the future belongs to you. Just like the topic of our discussion, the content. And we are into round two. In this round, we are going to discuss... Um, so, Reiner, what was the topic of the round two? Remind me, we please. Are we're discussing if money ruins independent uh, filmmaking. Thank you. So the topic kind of. of round two was if money can ruin the independent filmmaking. And is, if I remember correctly, Liliana will go first. I think I'm going first. You are. Yeah. Then you go Reiner first. Is going. Yes, 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 yes. Um, okay. I, it's, again, a very simple answer. No, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> there, to, to put the question in, or, or to say the full question, it would be, does the money that corporations, that businesses can bring in for corporate filmmaking, can it ruin independent filmmaking? And I actually don't think so. If we um, look at the filmmaking scene out there, I think it can always uh, benefit from more money being available, from more budgets being available. And I think I'm getting back to my first argument a bit. If it's done right, then uh, corporate filmmaking should definitely not um, have any negative influence on 
independent filmmaking. I think there are two ways how it can have a very positive influence. Uh, a, if I'm if, if we are hiring someone, a director or whoever, for a film project, uh, they would be on a contract with this for, for, for three months, 12 weeks or something like that, and then they are free. They would earn good money during that time. Uh, that doesn't mean they would have to stop the independent projects they are still working on. For example, the producers I have on contract for Hacker Hunter, they are at the same time working on three, four other own projects because it's not necessarily always a full-time job working on our on our films. Uh, so at the same time, they get constant monthly income through us, which is obviously helpful for them. Uh, in that case, it can help them uh, maybe sit on a project a bit longer uh, with, while it's not bringing in money uh, because, well, income is there anyway. And the other part of it is that I do strongly believe, or we here at Kaspersky do strongly believe, that the filmmakers we're working with should in the end also benefit from it. So if someone comes to us and uh, has a story developed and wants to do that, and we think, yes, this is a fit, this is a topical fit for us, uh, then yes, we would take them under contract, we would finance it, we, want, we would license the final product, but at the same time we would try to license it out again. And as we would do a co-production, the filmmaker would get its their fair share, 50%, 30%, depending on how many uh, producers are involved in that whole thing. We're currently working on a project that is exactly that. A group of young German filmmakers pitched a project to us. We said, this is amazing. We're going to finance it. Um, and um, it's a co-production by three entities. If we will be able to sell it, and that is our target, we want to sell it. We don't want to run this on our YouTube channel they will get a third of the income from that. And like that, if something really is successful, the independent filmmakers we're working with would uh, still benefit from it. I also know that this is not typical for corporate filmmaking, but I think that is how corporate filmmaking should be, and that's why I'm making this point. And maybe if you want to... Is it my time to show an example now? If it would be, um, we could have a look at a short teaser for Hacker Hunter Olympic Destroyer. Yes, absolutely, um, Reiner. Um, I always like when our guests are not just talking, but showing something. It's uh, yes, superb. Yes, yes. Uh, nevertheless, if I can give a short introduction, this was done by an uh, Emmy awarded director for us. Um, we had him under contract for uh, 12 weeks. And uh, we think it's a very good film. And he, after he finished that film, uh, came back to us and said he was very thankful for the fact that there was absolutely no involvement in the sense of that we would try to tell him which kind of film to make um, and he's not even seen that in uh, other projects so often so let's have a look at that The opening ceremony was was literally like 30 seconds away from starting this is your big moment on the world stage if we can attack this infrastructure and bring down these servers, then we'll knock the Olympics offline and maybe prevent it from happening. In cybersecurity, we tend to go from the motivation, the capability, to the conclusion. And that's deeply problematic in international politics. That could actually trigger a chain of events leading to escalation, leading to an inadvertent conflict. From what is known about the group, it was pretty logical to think that it may be Lazarus behind the Winter Olympics hack. If they did some kind of attack, like all that would do is validate all the reasons why people didn't want to invite them. In a sense, the Olympic destroyer malware itself was meant to be found. Somebody. Okay. Welcome back to our live stream. We've just seen a short teaser from Reiner. Uh, thank you, Reiner, very much. I guess we will have to give a few seconds for Liliana to uh, finish watching it. Uh, while we are doing that, I need to say that I see questions coming up uh, in our YouTube uh, uh, streaming chat. We will take all questions after round three. Is that okay with you? Okay. So, Liliana, how can you comment on what you have just seen? This production of the Olympic Destroyer as part of the Hacker Hunted series. 
I loved it. First of all, uh, I love beautiful filmmaking, whether it's made with corporate money or independent, it doesn't matter. I mean, you can always see the talent behind each uh, work, each, each production and appreciate the talent. And um, from one side of things, I agree with Reiner that it's great when a corporation can fund movies, can fund creative content projects uh, and uh, not influence them. Uh, unfortunately, this rarely happens in the world. Uh, more often, uh, we see that corporations like try to hide something because, you know, it's not the movies you make uh, and what you make about, it's the movies you do not make <laughs> that mm. can speak a lot about the corporation. And I really suspect that there is no company in the world that would ever fund something that, for instance, investigates this company, okay? So uh, this would be a very bold move, <laughs> uh, very con counterintuitive for the corporate management. Sometimes so destructor. You, uh, destructor. Yeah, self-destruction. Uh, absolute absolute self-destruction. So they would never fund something like that. And that's why we need independent journalism and content making to highlight those things that corporations do not want to talk about. And just to demonstrate, uh, you know, a classical case uh, about the corporate lies is the BP two, uh, uh, two uh, year two and 10, um, 2010 uh, oil sp spill. So if you can, please show the picture that- Yeah, uh, Anatole is showing it right now. Uh, Thanks. Uh, yeah, the corporation was really reluctant to even talk and inform the public about the oil spin until the public itself started to, sh sorry, sh shitstorm on social media about it. <laughs> so they had to reply and this became a meme in the corporate world. And you can show the South Park famous Piece. Yeah, I knew sometimes during our live stream we will be seeing some South Park animation. Hello, I'm Tony Hayward, President and CEO of BP. Our accidental drilling spill again in the Gulf is a tragedy that should have never happened. And to all those affected, I want to say, we are deeply sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. Sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. Sorry. We're sorry. I'm deeply sorry. Sorry. So, we're back to studio. You've just seen a short clip uh, presented by our guest Liliana Pertinava on how companies should not address some of the issues they're facing. Uh, while Reiner still finishes watching his uh, uh, video stream, which is a little bit delayed uh, compared to our team's call, uh, I would like to finally ask our audience. Uh, you've had a chance to navigate through the uh, cas.pr OYF resource and the question to you is how many uh, people who responded to the uh, survey we had preferred to work nude in the future I will write this question uh, once again in chat how many people preferred to work nude now runner what can you comment on this uh, South clip uh, South Park clip not so much on the South Park clip. I think it's entertaining. Um, <laughs> uh, and unfortunately, uh, South Park often is quite realistic and true. Um, but on the point uh, Liliana made before, definitely. Uh, yes, uh, the films that are not being made are the interesting ones. And I'm not encouraging that we shouldn't have independent filmmaking anymore. But I also think, for example, a few years ago when Kaspersky was uh, attacked uh, 
the victim of a cyber attack ourselves, which is a bit embarrassing for a cybersecurity company, obviously. I would have loved to make a film about that. And I think everyone in our company would have loved to bring a filmmaker in and do a film about it, but we didn't have the budgets at that time. So um, I think it very much depends on your communication strategy. Sometimes I think it can actually be very good to bring someone independent in and let them do their thing. Uh, but I think indeed most of the businesses out there don't have that courage because it can go awfully wrong. <laughs> True. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, Rainer. I guess uh, we're concluding our round two. Time to show a short teaser for Liliana as a separation between round two and three. While you have an opportunity to answer uh, my question in chat and win the one year masterclass subscription. See you in a minute. Let's imagine you would make a movie about blockchain or cryptocurrency and mining. What would I show? Yeah. Like, what would I choose to show? There's this group of brave young men and women in the field. They're not here for a paycheck. They're here because they, they want to be a part of something that's really big that they can tell is happening all around them. Since Bitcoin hit the markets, when everyone was just questioning the hype, she decided to crack the Bitcoin conundrum by going straight into the rabbit hole. They said blockchain would do for the money system what the internet did for information. But why and how are Bitcoin and blockchain really changing the world? The crypto, the crypto space is an increasingly global phenomenon. The easiest way to describe what a blockchain is, it's a set of self-referencing groups of transactions. So Bitcoin to me is like stored value that you can do transactions with other coins. Sometimes it seems there's a crypto person in each building in Seoul. You have an enormous amount of activity all around the world in, in South Korea, in China, in Japan, in Russia, in Germany, all over the place. I think blockchain as a technology is, this, is the thing that's going to change the world. The mining is evolving, and uh, we need to go through this. I'm not a tech or business genius, but I still dream to achieve something big. You know, if you were to ask me where the problems are in crypto, I, I would say the biggest problem space is just making it easy and, and banking. If, if uh, you know, the first bank to do this right is going to be the biggest bank on the planet. Crypto Rush. A documentary with a taste for adventure. Coming in 2019. Well, hi everyone, and welcome once again to our live stream session. My name is Sergey Luria. I'm here in Moscow, and my two guests are in Germany and the UK, respectively. It's Rainer Bach, who is today debating the point of corporate content if done right, can be better in the future. And Lilian Pertinava is defending the position that independent content makers, those are the ones who will win the hearts and minds of the audience in the 21st century. That basically is the topic of our today's debate. And uh, mm, I actually see there were some attempts to answer my question about uh, owning the future in our uh, side report. Uh, you can still have a chance to answer and win our one-year Masterclass subscription license. Uh, but now, uh, let's go to round three. Round three. And the topic of the round three is uh, who actually coped better with COVID situation when people were stuck at different places with different work. And I believe... Uh, who's going first? Remind me, please. I'm going. Yes, go ahead. Oh, the trailer Liliana. for uh, okay. my documentary movie, Crypto Rush. Uh, I really appreciate it because uh, this is an independent filmmaking, uh, independent and uninfluenced by uh, any third parties. Uh, I have, uh, you know, this uh, important point to make. And uh, actually, our movie story, how we released Crypto Rush in the COVID 
pandemic times is uh, very interesting uh, for, you know, uh, the future of distribution and the future of independent content making, how it can be done. And I think it's really the shift of an era because right now you can, if you are an independent content creator, you can use platforms such as YouTube, such as Vimeo, such as, I don't know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all of those amazing platforms that you can use to distribute your content. Uh, you can use Patreon to create content and uh, be supported by the community of people who uh, are interested in the things you are discussing in your uh, content or movies or whatever it is you're doing. And I think this is a very great time to, to be independent. And I wanted to show you that uh, page uh, that we distributed Crypto Rush movie. Uh, this is like a Netflix quality documentary movie that is on Vimeo that is, uh, you know, you can go and watch right now. And uh, we just distributed ourselves. We didn't use any, uh, you know, uh, intermediary just to do that. And we uh, funded the movie ourselves and we are earning uh, the money ourselves from this movie 100% uh, as creators. So I think this is what COVID uh, showed us, that people are ready to see content brought to them at home, online, on demand. And this is a wonderful time to be an independent content creator, frankly. And uh, also, this is the opportunity for everyone who you know, thought that, oh, I need to work at Warner Brothers to do the movie, or I need to go to 20th Century Fox to do a movie. No, you can film your movie, you can film your blog from home, you can shoot it online and you can earn money online. This is a great time to be a content creator. And speaking of COVID, I think the content creators who shared accurate information about the pandemic uh, really strived in this time. Although, uh, you know, there are reports that independent news media suffered from ads revenue drop which is natural because all of the businesses suffered from ads revenue drops and they could not bring ads to press uh, but some independent content creators at the same time delivering accurate information strived and i wanted to share you this video clip of philippine uh podcast creators who gained several million millions of audiences because they were in the midst of chaos of the pandemic, they were delivering the accurate news and important information about COVID. The coronavirus uh, crisis uh, exploded. And so we did uh, an explainer on that. As you already know, a new strain of coronavirus has governments and nations nervous. Obviously, there was a lot of emotion attached to the coronavirus. There was a lot of um, unreliable information there was a lot of panic and we found that that's this is one particular strength of podcasting as well so in this special episode we will not talk about the latest numbers you can track that yourselves we know let's get to know and understand the enemy the coronavirus it calms people down and they feel that they learn uh, more I personally fell in love with radio features more than 20 years ago and obviously I love podcasts to what they've evolved to now. The engagement is much more personal, it's a warmer uh, medium, it sets us apart from the trolling culture, it insulates us from, from, uh, from the paranoia and the anger and the, the overall culture of, of fake news and, and, and debates that go nowhere uh, online. Thank Thank you, Liliana, for this clip. It was really inspiring. Uh, I think besides the fact that it was harder for the uh, old content creations, both corporate and independent and professionals, 
Uh, besides uh, the hardships they have encountered uh, for earning money during the COVID situation, there was the travel restriction. I think Reiner has uh, something to respond to your video. Do you, Reiner? I do. Um, I mean, yes, uh, I think there's opportunity in everything. Uh, and there especially was an opportunity in COVID for filmmakers that were able to um, leave the beaten track. So uh, we had two productions, two Hacker Hunter productions running at that time. And in one, we had a very young and fresh uh, director who was like, okay, I don't have to be there for the interviews. I don't have to travel. I can do that remotely over WhatsApp and uh, we send a local team and everything is fine. Uh, while the other director who was a more experienced guy was more like, yeah, no, I, I need to be there. You have to make you have to make it happen that I can travel to France and stuff like that, which uh, was much more difficult filmmaking and made it more complicated and more expensive. So I think, yeah, there are opportunities in it. But we we did two things um, that played with the with the with the fact that people were stuck at home. And really, I mean, if you're stuck at home and you can't leave your flat, how do you want to make a a film properly? Right? It's it's very difficult. And so one campaign that we ran last year, or rather a contest, was called 12, where we asked filmmakers from around the world to send us a one-minute clip of the same hour around the planet. So we said um, 10 a.m. that day, translate it into your local time and film a one-minute clip uh, that shows how you're dealing with the lockdown creatively. And uh, we put a price out for that, and we got an enormous amount of feedback, and especially we got so much positive feedback from filmmakers that were like finally something interesting to do and i might even win some money that's good but that's not so important you gave me an interesting challenge thank you because they were sitting at home and had nothing to do and that also happened to a filmmaker we work with uh, she's usually producing the stories for hacker hunter and she traveled to bali for a retreat and while she was there suddenly uh, the country was closed down. She couldn't return to London. And she was stuck in a villa, uh, luckily, so it was not an unpleasant uh, life there necessarily. But she was stuck in a villa <laughs> with five other creatives. Um, and So she didn't have to build her. a hut for herself? Yeah, she did not have to build a hut and she wasn't too, bad, too badly off. Uh, but I was speaking to her and she was like, yeah, I'm stuck here now for the next weeks. And so we said quite spontaneously, why don't you make a film about that? Follow what's happening in that villa and how the lockdown is changing in Bali. People don't know what's going in Bali, going on in Bali, and it might be completely different from the rest of the world. And we did two very quickly produced little films about it. And we could have a look at a uh, at the teaser for the first episode of it. If Okay. We don't know what sort of damage this virus could do if it were to spread in a country with a weaker health system. There were some rumors if we had cases in Bali already or not. Maybe three weeks into my trip here, that's when things started to really hit this island. Saying the people who gather together will be found 100 mil or one year in prison. Wow. What? And all of a sudden we were in the lockdown. Here, I'm have creative people around me and the pool and nice warm weather. I don't know. Why, why would I want to go home? Well, thank you, Reiner, for this uh, very, I would say, envilicious video. I really wish I was stuck at some place like that uh, during the COVID. Uh, I also had an experience, I think, with pretty much the same community of creative professionals. We also did a, a, a content with them. It was really uh, enlightening and uh, I really was impressed how many people were actually ready to uh, deliver their content to, to us, uh, who gave them an opportunity to jump at. Now, we have a winner. Uh, Mr. Askar Jumagalif has won our special Congrats. prize. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, but we're not stopping. The round three is almost over. So everybody who has questions, we will be taking questions in our Q&A section after our round three is over. 
I'm actually already opening the vote section and you can start voting for the contestants of today. But I think we need to give Liliana one chance to counterattack and provide her reasoning what she thinks about COVID. Uh, well, as I said, I think it's it's, an, it's a good time to be an independent filmmaker when even the big studios uh, needed to go online to distribute their movies. This is a great time. Uh, we can see the amount of online platforms constantly growing. So it's a great opportunity once again. And even being in the lockdown, there are you know creative ways to express yourself. So it's not necessary to travel to Bali or to any other <laughs> expensive part of the world in lockdown, which is even impossible to say the least uh, at the moment. Uh, hopefully this will drop, uh, but creativity and cre you know, creative minds are never um, idle. Uh, they are all, always working on something. So I, I wanted to show you a quick clip from our movie, Crypto Rush. So it's a movie with filming in six different countries. We traveled to make it in China, South Korea, Singapore, Hong Kong, Switzerland, both coasts of the US. And also to tell the story, we made some graphics. And uh, speaking about corporate budgets, uh, we didn't use any corporate budgets. It was an independent filmmaking. But we used uh, the raw, uh, you know, talented young people who are eager to make something creative, to are, you know, enthusiastic about making creative and interesting content. So this clip is from Crypto Rush explaining the first hype about Bitcoin and how it evolved. Let's see it. The end of 2017 marked the breakthrough of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. That's when everyone in the world began to hear about it. Bitcoin's price hit 5,000 in September of that year. Then, after comments about fraud caused volatility, it later climbed over 19,000 as the investors and others came to believe the surge will continue. Searches for how to buy Bitcoin was one of the most popular search phrases according to Google Trends. Some journalists and financial experts called it a tulip mania of the 21st century as the Bitcoin price nearly hit 20,000. Well, thank you, Liliana. I think uh, we are running uh, late and it's time for us to wrap up round three. We have opened the vote, so you can see the link in chat and using the QR code, using your mobile or just clicking on the link. Please go ahead, Wolf, who, gets, uh, who is the winner of today's debate? And we have a short pause. I uh, would like to sort of uh, like uh, to refresh in the atmosphere and remind one of the actually Reiner's colleagues, Susie O'Neill, who is also based in London. Let's uh, watch a short video about her. Ladies and gentlemen, please, let's hear it for Miss Hypnotique. I'm Susie O'Neill, Head of B2B Brand Content at Kaspersky. I've actually been doing music since I was four years old. and I studied a degree of music, uh, studying both classical and electronic music composition. When you're creating business content, um, particularly for enterprises, sometimes you have to go against the grain. It's all about telling people things they already know, otherwise they probably would have already bought your product. Sometimes you have to try different techniques and be brave. Be adventurous, try different things and see what works. We've recently created some videos where we showed the importance of how you can travel securely by using cybersecurity. And we also made some videos with a yoga training organization in Bali who are using new technology in different ways. So we're creating a parallel between their technology and also our security. You have to put it out there and try and see whether it does capture that attention, whether it does work or not. Watch more on this channel. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our live stream. If you missed it, you missed the opportunity to win our prize, but you can still watch the video and learn from our today's guests. Rainer Bach from Germany and Liliana Pertinava based in London, UK. Now it's time for Q&A while you can still uh, cast your vote and determine who actually wins this debate. Uh, so one of the questions there was, 
about uh, the benefits and negatives of corporate content making. So I don't know who can go first. Uh, maybe Reiner, you can. So what okay. are the benefits and what are the downsides of the corporate content making? Uh, yeah, I can. I mean, uh, we've discussed lots of that at the beginning, but I've seen that uh, whoever asked that question was a bit late. Um, the benefits are usually you have budgets, uh, which is not uh, necessarily the situation you have as an independent filmmaker. Um, the downsides are you usually have uh, time pressure. You usually have a pressure to deliver certain results. Um, and if you are not successful, well, you might not have the chance to do a second part of that series, for example. So I don't think these pressures are much different from other filmmakers that would be delivering something to, I don't know, the Netflixes and Amazon Primes of this world. Um, but they're different from independent filmmakers that are doing something for as a passion project and would be on it for three years because it's just what they want to do. We can't do that. Definitely. Okay, thank you, Reiner. Liliana, would you like to say something about that? I would like to say that the society will always need independent content and independent movie making. And the, the most, the biggest benefactor of independent content is the people, are the people, the society. Uh, first point. The second point is um, you, as an independent filmmaker, you are most uh, importantly be uh, have to be able to talk to corporations and work for them uh, to make money. <laughs> but the other important need as an independent filmmaker is to stay true to your cause, stay true to the voice that you have, the creative voice that cannot be influenced by anyone. So stay true to that voice. And those, those are the real people who are true to the voice, who make real art, okay. you know, make real art. So independence is always prevailing. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think I will take one more question before we wrap up today's debate. And the question was uh, about the social content. And uh, when you're alone and not in a big company, is it really uncomfortable for you not to know what to do next? I think this question goes to Liliana. Uh, if you're uncomfortable, can you repeat like the, the essence of the question? Are you uncomfortable when you don't know what to do next, when, you, when you're not being told or when you're not talking to other colleagues or bosses? You mean it, when you're working in a company or by when yourself? When you're not working in a company. That's how I got the question. I see. So going independent is a very difficult choice to make, but uh, once you make it, you start growing your own legs and your own hands and you teach to be completely, um, you know, self-assured and uh, self-reliant in the decisions you make. So this is just the decision-making process. Uh, of course, you need some colleagues and peers to give you advice. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, if you are the leader, you can lead by, you know, knowing what to do next. And this just comes with experience. Okay. Thank you, Liliana. I guess we're out of time and it's time to announce our winner. By a split vote of our viewers. It's, it's, it's a debate, so we cannot have a draw. So the winner is Liliana Pertinava. Wow, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yes. Uh, this discussion, thank you for voting for me. And I should say kudos and uh, thanks to Reiner on uh, the, the amazing work and the beautiful content you're making at Kaspersky, because this is a very uh, significant content. Not many companies are able to do that. So I'm really thankful. Something lost, uh, but again, I would like to congratulate Liliana. I would like to thank Reiner for your participation. I would thank like you. to thank our audience, our team. Our next live stream will be dedicated to the protection of kids. So, goodbye everyone, stay safe.
Thank you, Sergey. Thank you, everyone. Hi, I'm Reiner. I am uh, part of the brand activation studio in Kaspersky. And uh, what we do is we produce content. Let's imagine you would make a movie about blockchain or cryptocurrency and mining. What would I show? What would I choose to show?